Hello, good evening and welcome to the Invictus Racing League No Assist Championship. We are here at Marina Bay, a very, very wet Marina Bay street circuit in Singapore for round 10 of the No Assist Championship. The, uh, the Grand Prix first held in 2008, a five kilometre, 3.1 mile long circuit, 23 turns, starting at 8 p.m. local time in Singapore. Cars doing full throttle around 49% of the, the race lap. The cars at maximum downforce and around 70 gear changes per lap. And yes, t I am Gareth, otherwise known as Captain Stiff. You can find me on Twitter at GT2 uh, underscore driving and tomorrow i am joined by a guest comment uh, commentator in the box uh, you'll know him as a driver in the Swiss league and equally the commentator for the performance 1 and F3 leagues and that is Malk so good evening Malk to good, good to have you on board Oh, thank you very much, Gareth. Uh, good evening to yourself. Um, it's, it's an honour and privilege to join you tonight in the commentary box. And as you said, it's a, a really wet, wet uh, bay. So it's very interesting to see how the guys can capitalise on the driving stuff. But um, I can't wait for it. Um, I'm, I'm just honoured and privileged to join you in the commentary box, and hopefully we'll have a cracking one tonight, Gareth. Yeah, absolutely, and it's looking at the moment we've got Joel V520 and Mike heading out on track on the intermediate tyres, so not quite full wet conditions. You can see the track looking quite slick, but no standing water too bad across the circuit, so the guy's not opting for the full wet tyres, but if this track wasn't hard, it's definitely got a lot harder um, with the rain, so we'll look to see if that's going to impede the guys come qualifying, and equally, I'm sure it will shake up the grid quite somewhat heading into the race, don't you think, Mark? Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, the guys probably have had their practice in the dry in, at the Marina Bay at Singapore, but they'll be thinking, <laughs> if people haven't got the wet setups, they'll be like, oh, <laughs> what did they do around here and stuff? See how it goes. But I, what do you reckon the time will be around here in the wet? What would be your prediction? It's a hard one to say. It really, with these guys running on no assists, it might be a case of driving into the unknown. As you see, Joel really struggling to get it slowed down into the hairpin. These guys should be doing, I'd say, maybe in the the high 150s. Uh, possibly even dipping into the I don't believe if it gets any wetter I'd, I could possibly see it's going into the two two minutes but at the moment a high 150 would probably be the highest I think these guys would be looking at but at the moment it's it's more like the uh, Tokyo Drift for Joel 520 as he makes his way around the third sector as he comes under the bridge uh, wonderful place to watch Formula 1 if you ever get a chance to go out to Singapore go sit there as the cars go underneath into the final complex of corners and Joel even on his outlap really struggling to get the power down in that Force India uh, I'm just watching uh, Mike doing his uh, lap well he's starting his uh, flying lap and stuff but he really is struggling at the minute uh, with the inter tyres in the Ferrari car so he needs to try and get a good uh, XD he's going to the last corner now uh, trying to avoid because there's some corners here I believe that he can easily get corner cuts without even realising it um, don't you agree? Yeah absolutely it's, it's Singapore is rather brutal when it comes to track limitations Joel drifting his way around turn 5 there as he makes his way up the straight through the slight kink at turn 6 up towards Memorial Corner at turn 7 and yeah it's it's one of those places where especially on the wet curbs this it can be really easy to unbalance and unsettle that car and Good evening to Sab watching in the stream tonight. Yeah, I can understand it wet in Singapore. It's the last thing these guys want. And uh, I'm sure the rest of the uh, drivers and Invictors will be watching the No Assist stream and hoping that this is not replicated tomorrow night for the Performance League or Wednesday night for the Equal Performance Leagues. Um, you, you definitely don't want that to happen then, <laughs> Gareth, on the Wednesday night. Definitely. Um, but yeah, it... It's going to be very... Oh, Mike! Oh, nearly hit the wall there. Coming up to... In sector two there. Coming up to under the, the bridge part. But he nearly hit the wall. That, sorry about that. But he was just nearly hit the wall there, that part. But he's then really trying to make sure they get a good lap around here. But I think he might be right here. He might go to like the 150s. Probably the two-minute marker. 
Yeah, oh. Joel, Joel heading around the final sector now. Grazed the wall on the outside of turn uh, 15 there as he, he came round towards 16 and 17. He goes under the tunnel, round into the final two corners at 20, 21. He's coming round to the kink at 22 and 23. Very easy to, to run ever so slightly wide, especially over this curbing here and slide way around the final corner. But Joel's going to be the first one to set a time lap and he does a 158.90. Uh, or 970, sorry. So Joel setting the first time lap up it well, like we were saying in the high 150s. So uh, Joel setting that benchmark as Mike goes across the line and does a two minute, one second point nine, so uh, almost three seconds slower. Ooh, ooh, what a lap from SJD. 158 flat there from, from him in the Haas car. That's a great lap from him. Absolutely belter. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, scope lost it there on the last few points. Some of the guys are all pulling their times in now. And I tell you what, 158, <laughs> they're the ones to look out for because look, you got <laughs> both Sauber cars, uh, Boy Better Know and Speed Queen, one tenth between them two. Oh, nearly scope, nearly lost it there, but that is just insane stuff there. But uh, Stiff Blue has just returned. Uh, back into the No Assist League after an absence of the 2018, um, I think it was one season or two seasons, I can't remember, but now Bruce is returning back. And Tommy the Rod, who originally joined the league, he had to leave, and now he's good to come back now so for this race, so he's just joining in the Haskar uh, in replacing uh, Renner, who's unavailable tonight. But uh, I've just heard as well, Gareth, uh, about the weather crew. Um, they said... It's going to be dry at the start, but rain later. Oh, so. so that does make it really tricky for these guys here when it comes to deciding on that setup because driving around here on a dry setup on a wet track will be really, really tricky. That, Of course, the downforce around here is crucial. So especially, I must, I must say, it's the first race back in three weeks, so these guys may have been off of the game for a while just taking a little bit of a break as a great lap there from Joel well, dips into the 157s not even dips into the 157s takes a head first dive into the 157s currently eight tenths of a second over SJD 1988 in second place so Joel going quicker and quicker and one of the benefits of these guys on the wet compounder tyres it's not quite the same as being on the dries where essentially you get a one lap uh, shot at it some of these tyres they do a set or over one or two laps tend to get a little bit faster as you take the edge off of them so the guys can fuel up the cars and essentially go out and run around a little bit in them and just just see what they can get when they come to being a little bit more comfortable on the circuits we see speed queen going into the 156s so we're getting oh. quicker as the session goes on oh <laughs> what a lap brilliant brilliant stuff from speed queen Top of the pile in the t tier one section, uh, Gareth, on that one. I'll tell you what, what do you say about that lap? <laughs> yeah, superb lap there from Speed Queen. She currently leads the tier one championship on 67 points at the moment. She's definitely found her form in the midpoint of the season. So uh, Speed Queen currently at the moment leading the field away by eight tenths of a second. Nikki 9095's also gone into 157's with a 157.496 in the McLaren. So the times are getting faster. So it looks like the guys are getting a little bit more confident. The rain looks like it's eased off ever so slightly since the start of the session. So we'll definitely look to see these times drop down. And as I was saying before, we, the guys have come up back after a three week break. Of course, we, we hope you all enjoyed your festive period, uh, had a great Christmas and New Year. It's great to have you back on board with Invictus as we head into our final three races of this first season. A scope fielder, a 156.517, puts himself at Joel oh. once again. Oh, the times brilliant. are falling here in Singapore. You can see the rain has stopped in sector three, or it looks like it stopped. Uh, it's ever so slightly drizzly, but... Tony Y is going to come around. He drops into ninth position there, 159.7. But what a superb lap there from Joel Fee520. A man on a mission. Ah, I spoke too soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I bet you don't know what to say now. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought Tommy the Rod would have improved his time there. But 
Oh, absolutely belters. Absolutely belters here. Uh, Rick's the only one who's not done a lap in yet, but he's gone back into the pits. Um, again, do you think do you, do you think they'll get even lower? Do you think we might get the the dry tyres? Probably at the last few minutes. Oh, it, with the rain still falling in sector two at the moment, I think we're probably going to run on to intermediates towards the end of the session. But I, I, with the time having dropped already by three seconds, I would say these guys are going to be aiming at maybe a 154 uh, as a as a quality time, depending on how fast the track gets. Of course, these guys getting more and more confident with each lap that they're out on the circuit. SJD still circulating along with Joel and Scopefield as Speed Queen's currently back in the pit lane, possibly fueling up and putting a fresh set of those inters on, ready for one final, uh, or I say one final, a couple more laps around the circuit. Essentially, the longer you can stay out there burning that fuel off and using those tyres to the effect that they are moving enough water to keep yourself in a straight line, probably the better at the moment. I'm just speechless with those tyres, just like, <laughs> keep on going, like playing cards, <laughs> you know what I mean, it just goes and goes, but, uh, regarding the question I asked you earlier, I think, it's going to be tough, I think, if it does stop, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to dry, the whole track has got to be dry within like, three to four minutes, so, if it's going to stop, it's going to stop right now to stand any chance of doing a one proper lap in. Scott's really going for it there, but he's going to do his lap in now. So it'll be interesting to see how he can capitalise on the next... Oh, oh he, he lost it there on the first few corners there. Absolutely insane stuff, but I don't know if that may invalidate his lap, but he's still going. He's still going, Gareth, on this. Um, he's going to the first DRS straight now. I know it doesn't say DRS is enabled yet, but I don't think we're far. Well, I say we're far off because it's still tipping it down. But it's just insane. It's done a 31.4 in sector one, Gareth. Do you think that's a? Do you think that's quick, or do you think that should have been? It's not uh, too. Not too bad. I'm just on board with Humboldt Stone. He's just about to finish this lap. He was 1.3 seconds up over the second sector. He's going to come across the line now. He's going to go higher up. He's goes pole. <gasps> A 155.816 puts him in pole, original pole position by six hundredths of a second over SJD at the moment. So Humberstone really locked in that final sector. He tagged the wall slightly on the exit of turn 16, but he still carried on. Looked like it didn't phase him whatsoever. And the Toro Rosso puts it on provisional pole with five minutes, 15 seconds left in the session. Oh, it, absolutely brilliant stuff. You, you got to watch out for Hubberstone, Scope and Delange because they're battling out for the top, the tier two championship this season, and they're seven points uh, between themselves. Anyway, so be interested to see how they, they can capitalise. To be fair, Gareth, um, who do you think will do? You th who do you think will be your predictions for the top three of the race based on what you've seen? I know it's not finished yet. Point, but have you got a, a hinkling? I, think? I feel it's it's such a tricky one. It all I think all depends on when this rain comes. Who acts first? Who can get the most amount out of that dry period? And then who makes that dash into the pit lane first for the wet the wet tyres? We've seen people come in a lap too early. We've seen people come in a lap too late. So it's all about that uh, crossover period between the wet to dry. Uh, so it'd be really, really easy to uh, to find out earlier or late in the, or earlier in the session whether uh, they'll be locked in in that dry period if anyone starts to stretch a lead out. Oh, definitely. I'm just I'm still watching Boy Better now. He would have had a one minute fifty four, but he did invalidate his lap. He must have done it when he did after that first few corners. But he's eight tenths quicker than his bare time, so. Uh, about 157.5 at the minute so this this is just after sector one i'm not saying that, that could happen um just seeing how he goes in through the, the, the tricky 
I always think the second sectors in every course. Oh my god, you nearly lost it there. In every course, in every race, it's always the trickiest. The first and third are always like the straight lines, and you try and get it spot on. Don't you agree, or do you think there's a difference? Yeah, so. and I feel that second sector, especially here, of course, the famous Singapore sling uh, from 2008 to 2012. It was that very, very fast chicane, which was almost taken at flat out speed and had those unforgiving bumps on either side tended to send cars flying in the air towards a barrier with a, a very quick stop at the end of that uh, that flight so uh, it was changed ever so slightly it has taken a little bit of fun out of it but the Singapore sling nevertheless is still quite a uh, quite a oh. uh, oh, it's micro tires from the session currently sitting in ninth place as Scott's going around the final corner now yeah uh, he's he's going to come. It's going to be a 54, just oh! in the 54. Oh. Superb lap there from Boy Ben and OSB Scott. A 154.868 puts himself on pole by a, almost a second there. So the track is definitely evolving again a lot faster. So these guys are currently now coming out to set their final laps. It might have might really be a race to the line. Who can get over last will set the fastest time. I, 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 I can't stop competing. I don't know what's going to happen here because you just don't know what to expect. And this is what I love about Invictus as well, guys, because you you get absolutely close racing, good battles everywhere you go, and fair, clean racing at the same time. But it also gives us, the commentators, heart, heart attack moments because <laughs> you just don't know what to expect <laughs> at the same time. And that's what we love about it. Oh, brilliant! Oh, brilliant from Joel! I'm sorry about that, Gareth. Oh, brilliant stuff from 1 minute, 1 minute 54.2 from Joel. Yeah, you can see this track is drying out lap upon lap. It's you, it's not even minimal back gaps between the guys at the moment. It's it's That's six tenths of a second he's taken out. Nicky 9095 oh. moves up into second with 154.432. So the track is definitely getting faster. Speed Queen's coming, coming around the third sector now. She's going underneath the stand, coming into the final complex of corners. We'll look to see if she's going to approve. She's currently running at 143, so she's got about 10 seconds to get around the final two corners. It looks like she's going to do it pretty handily at the moment. 150, 51, 52. Oh. Does she hit in the 53s? It's going to be right oh, underneath the 54s. 153.987. Oh. Speed Queen in the Salva moves up onto provisional pole with 45 seconds left in the session. Oh, what a, what a lap. Oh, my God. Boy, better, not, boy better know. It was just like seven hundredths, seven hundredths of a second behind Speed Queen. And we only got 30 seconds left. Where's the countdown from the theme that you need to <laughs> in this one? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just absolutely insane. So we've got 20, come up to 20 seconds left. Will there be any more shocks, Gareth? I just want to board. Think? Just on board with Joel here. He's coming around the third sector now, coming through the uh, towards the stadium section underneath the stand. And Joel currently sitting in third, drifts a little bit. That's going to cost him a little bit of time there. And Joel currently coming around to the final two, uh, final four corners. Keeps it nicely within the lines there. Drifts out a little bit wide. That's going to cost him a love, maybe another tenth or two. He's going to come around the final corners. But it looks like it's going to be another fast time. Does he get into the 54s? He doesn't go any faster. So it's a 154.2684. Joel 520 stays in third place. Uh, Scott is currently going slow, so he's not going to improve. Speed Queen still looking like she's on. Uh, she's going slower as well, so it's going to be. Oh, brilliant! Oh, Nikki, nine oh nine five or one fifty three point nine eight seven by one hundredth of a second. He beats Speed Queen eighty for provisional pole. SJD nineteen eighty eight is currently coming around the final couple of corners. Now he's the nearest on track. He bails out. So SJD coming currently in fifth position. Scopefield is not going any quicker. Humberstone doesn't look like he's going any faster we'll see when he comes to the split he's just going past the hairpin now so Scopefield are currently um, Humbostone currently sitting in seventh position as he comes up towards turn 14 oh my god oh what what do you say Speed Queen oh Speed Queen's retired from the race itself but 
Do you think Hoberstein will get into the fours? He's just run think? quite deep into turn 17. That's going to compromise him as he gets to turn 18 underneath the stadium. Uh, he's currently at 1 minute 40, so he's got four corners to do in, ten, in about 12 seconds. Doesn't look like he's going to improve. He's coming around the final corners now. Oh. Oh, and it's going to be a bit of a scruffy end to the lap for Humberstone. Doesn't no. look like he's going to improve. Oh, and he... oh. oh and it's sorry about that, <laughs> Chill Nyland drops into seventh position, jumps Humberstone at the death there. So uh, Chill Nyland, the last one to cross the line, does a 155.567, puts him up onto uh, seventh in the fourth row of the grid. Oh, I do apologise, Gareth. I didn't mean to <laughs> interrupt a few of them. But you know what I mean? It's just, it's just unbelievable stuff. Absolutely unbelievable. And what a lap from Nicky. That was a cracking lap for me, to be fair. Um, what do you say about that? Yeah, absolutely. Great lap there from Nicky. Nicky's been slightly inconsistent this season. Hasn't managed to get the same pace that he did towards the end of the 2017 game in No Assist, where he was really starting to do well in the in the championship. Unfortunately, fell off towards the end of the season. But there is your qualifying results for this session. It's Nicky 9095 takes pole for 153.97 second, nine thousandths of a second ahead of Speed Queen 80 in the Sauber. It's the second Sauber of Scott comes in third with Jelfi 520 in fourth. SJD comes in fifth in the Haas with Scopefielder in the Toro Rosso in sixth. Chill Nyland in seventh with Humbostone in eighth. Rick WR, uh, WR88 comes in ninth with Delanger 93 in tenth. Tommy the Rod comes in 11th with Mike in 12th. Stifler 1980 on his return uh, comes in 12th and I believe it was Tony Y that uh, pulls up the rear of the grid down in uh, I believe it was 12th position possibly 14th. 13th. 14th, 14th. sorry. That's uh, all right. Uh, just checking the stream. Evening to F1 Richard. Uh, good to have you, of course, the form man in the F3 league at the moment. Definitely one to watch come towards the end of the season. He says, evening, guys. Malk, have you got one eye on the TV? Uh, I, I've i just seen the score, but I will watch it later on the uh, the Wolves-Liverpool match. Uh, it'll be, I'm not, I haven't got the TV on at the minute, so I, I'm trying to watch it later. But I've just seen the results. <laughs> it's not working. Um, I'll be right back, Gareth. I'm just going to speak to the guys quickly. So yep, no problem. Um, so whilst Malk is just with them, we'll just quickly go back over what happened in Belgium last week. Um, I say last week in the last round. That's three weeks ago. Uh, Belgium Grand Prix was won by Delanger, his first win in the No Assist Championships. Speed Queen carried on her good form in this midpoint of the season she came in second with Joel coming in third and Joel's another one that's really struggled in the in the uh, the season so far starting to hit a little bit of form now he's moved up into second in the tier one championship of course tier one is the guys are using full no assist and tier two are the no assist users but they are using the racing line so the guys have possibly just moved to no assists for the first time using that racing line which hopefully they'll be moving off of uh, when we come to season two in a few weeks time uh scopefielder came in fourth uh whilst scott boy better know sb crashed out and uh, really uh took a hit in the championship so with speed queen now leading uh by almost tw or 20 27 points ahead of scott and 26 points ahead of joel so definitely a big catch up for the guys in the tier one whilst tier two is currently led by humbostone on 59 points uh scopefielder on 56 and delanger not far behind them also so the guys in tier two equally as close as the guys in tier one but we know we've seen uh, a lot of the tier two drivers mixing up with the tier ones this year so Humbostone's picked up race victory. Uh, Scope's done very well. So of course, Delango picking up that race victory in Belgium. So do not expect to see these Tier 1 drivers drive away uh, and leave the others for dust as we get to the formation lap. Uh, as you can see, everyone there out on that choice tyre. Very interesting uh, tyre choices for those guys. We'll see. We'll have a look quickly um, at their tyre choices. Yeah, and it's uh, ultra soft tyres for the whole uh, the whole grid, apart from 
uh, Scopefield, who's gone for the soft, the harder compound, soft comp uh, tyre, and Stifler1980 has decided he's going to go all out, and he's gone for the hyper soft tyre. So uh, Scopefield on those softs is going to look run a little bit longer. Those tyres will work as it starts to get colder and the rain starts to fall. Uh, fall. The tyre, the tyres that are harder tend to work in the uh, the colder conditions ever so slightly, but. Stifler is going to be mighty fast on those hypers come the start of this race. Oh, definitely. I think it will be. Uh, it's his first race coming back to be fair, Gareth. So it'll be interesting to see if he can keep those hyper soft, hyper soft tyres going. But I think, correct me if I'm wrong. I think the, the tyre situations. It's definitely one to two stops. I think, in my personal opinion. Um, purely because the hypersofts uh, probably last about three to five laps ultra soft last about seven to nine i think and then the softs probably last probably last a bit longer than that to be fair. yeah um, it's it's quite a high deg circuit around here especially if you're on those pink walled hypersoft tires so stifflers probably going to find himself within the pit lane in around maximum six or seven laps if he can really look after those tyres as we've had a couple of disqualifications from the formation lap uh, not to worry they will be joining us on the grid um, possibly with a little bit of a disadvantage with uh, warming up the tyres but uh, Scott, Joel, Rick, Mike and Stifler all currently now waiting on the grid for Nicky as he comes around the final corner now on those ultra-soft tyres. So it really will be who can make these tyres. Do they think the ultras will get them to last until the rainy period? Uh, if you want my honest opinion, if they can manage it, which I know Speed Queen would, would do it, to be fair, because she's really good with the tyre management and stuff. But I think it probably will but it just depends on when it will kick off and it's going to be long i'll give up oh, we have four lights, lights. Five lights and they're held for what feels like eternity and we're still we're still waiting at the lights well, they're, they're and gone. they are finally <laughs> off charlie whiting waiting to hold the button they're really holding everyone with bated breath and dicky maintains position heading into the first corner speed queen still in second boy but no is still in third joel and sjd maintain position whereas humberstone has moved up two positions from eight into sixth position as nikki leads the field away for the first time as they enter turn four and five up the straight has anyone got drag on anyone uh, humberstone 2.2 of a second behind sjd at the moment as we head in it's a gaggle of salvers behind this mclaren as we head in towards the slower section of, t of sector two oh my god stiff low and scope side by side doing a bit of the oh, no. they're still side by side oh brilliant oh the stiffer just holding on for ninth here at the minute gareth but I tell you what i'm still watching it from rick's point of view here at the back from 11th and oh my god this is absolutely belter belter oh my god You'll probably hear me saying, "Oh my God!" every single time. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. it wouldn't so. be a it wouldn't be a stream of mount commentating if you didn't hear what a move or what a belter. Anyway, we've got the two Salbers fighting <laughs> over second and third at the moment, with Speed Queen and Scott both battling it out over second and third. It's allowing Nikki a little bit of breathing space. He's moved seven tenths of a second ahead of Speed Queen at the moment, but the two Salbers really going at it as we head under the bridge, coming into turn 18, out of turn 19 here in the two. Sauber's still going at it. They're not not too far behind. We've got Joel V520 who's still sitting six tenths of a second behind of Scott. So the top four slightly, slightly breaking away from SJD at the moment, who's 1.1, 1.2 seconds uh, away. So the top four definitely with a positive and uh, pretty lightning start. Oh, definitely. I'm just still watching it from the, the back's point of view here, but Stifler's like I said, on his return to the No Assist League, he's closing on, was closing on Delange on before the first corner here, but now he's just trying to catch up as quickly as possible, as you said. He needs to try and get past so many people because of his hypersoft tyres. It'd be interesting to see if he can last it that long, to be fair, because it's a very long track, shall we say. Yeah. Four, four positions made so far for Stifler 1980 so he's definitely getting the job done he's moved up past Scope, Rick and Tommy uh, at the moment it's Tony heading up the or to 
essentially bringing up the rear of the field at the moment but Tony sitting two tenths of a second behind Mike the two uh, the Ferrari and the Renault heading down towards the Singapore sling section at the moment oh just watch still watching it from scope and Rick's point of view at the minute Gareth so hopefully I'll try and get back up to the, the top crew in a minute but good bow between these two to be fair yeah, still fights going on. We've got uh, Chill Nyland, Humbo Stone and SJD in a gaggle of cars for 5th, 6th and 7th at the moment with SJD in the Haas leading the Toro Rosso and the Renault as they head under, uh, under the stands at turn 18 and turn 19. The Renault just sitting back and just, just shadowing Humbo Stone and just seeing if he makes a move on SJD. As SJD now 2.2 seconds behind the uh, the leading foursome at the moment. So SJD definitely starting to cause a little bit of a backlog as the guys behind start to catch up. Oh, definitely. Oh, my God, Rick. Rick's going for the move there. I thought he would have had a chance there with uh, against Scope Builder for 10th, respectively. But now he's got Tommy the Rod behind from 12th. This could be a three. Oh, my God. Please. Can we have a three in a bed? Tommy the Rod's got a three second time penalty for multiple warnings. Oh my god, Rick's going for the outside. Oh, what a move! Oh, the, oh, Hass is gonna, the Hass is going to try and do both oh, in the same no. corner. It's gonna, there's going to be contact between the two of them. And unfortunately, it's Schofield oh. and Tom in the road that get tangled up as they uh, unfortunately end this, uh, get to the end of the straight there. And it was the memorial corner at turn seven where Schofield are trying to get the move done. And then unfortunately, the Hass and the, uh, and the Toro Rosso just get entangled up ever so slightly. And that's allowed Rick to move up into 10th position and a little bit of gap between himself and everyone else now. Did you would you have gone for the soft tyres if you was in that position, Gareth, or did you would you have gone for the ultra soft at that point? If you started in the start of I think it really depends on how long they think this rain is gonna is gonna take before it gets here. Because if if the rain takes longer than anticipated, then the soft tyre is definitely the way to go. And these guys on the oh. ultra softs, especially if you're fighting with each other early in the race, is gonna really compromise you, and you're gonna take a lot of life out of those tyres. So. At the moment, these ultra softs, you've got to really be careful on them as Speed Queen does the fastest lap of the race of 142.251. So you've got to really make sure you're not taking too much life out of these ultras because at the moment, although he's sitting down in 11th position, Scopefielder on the soft compound attire, he's definitely going to have a slight advantage uh, when these ultras start to go over their shelf life and equally uh, Stifler 1980 on those hypers sitting in ninth place he's not making he's currently eight tenths of a second behind the Langer 93 so not making the moves up the grid that he was possibly hoping no I, I, I think he would have been he, you'd be all right in ninth but like I said he would have would have been better if he did a few more uh, positions higher up based on the type of kick that he had but again like I said this is his first race back so it's, it's a good start so far to be fair but looking at it from everyone's point of view I think I mean Nicky's trying to pull away from the two Sauber cars uh, it's going to be interesting stuff but Speed Queen I will say this now based on the tables um, from the last ones Speed Queen, all she has to do is just get two or more points to win the Tier 1 Championship, I believe. Because you only get 12 points from uh, the two win by each win. So if if, you, if uh, Speed Queen sorry, has got uh, at least two more points better than, uh, which I believe it was Joel. Yeah, Joel and Scott, uh, I believe Joel is 25 points and Scott is 26, I believe it was, behind. So yeah. with... Uh, with 36 points left uh, for the race victors. Oh, as we see side by side between Joel and Scott into the final corner. What a oh. superb move there from Joel. Really opportunistic. The two go side by side through the fast corner at, at the final corner at turn 23. And Joel moves up into third position. And that's what he wants to do. He, he needs to start closing up to the spe uh, to Speed Queen ahead. And well, I was on board, well, on board with the two there. And well, you would never see an uh, overtaking move there. Something really quite special there from Joel, who just saw his opportunity and just sent it down the inside. And Scott had nothing to do to come back at him. And Scott now dropping back. Oh, my 
God, sorry. I'm trying to hold on now. The two in a bed, two in a bed. Passing up on the first deer rush straight between Joel and Homerstone. Oh my God, oh, absolutely insane stuff here. I tell you what, oh my God, no, no. Jill was going to go for there, but Homerstone just saying, no, no, sunshine. You're not getting past there. They're coming up to the, uh, the, yeah, the, I don't even know anymore now because I'm speechless <laughs> watching this. But uh, I tell you what, I am so privileged to join you tonight, uh, Captain Stiff, aka Gareth. I tell you what, legend you are. Yeah, it's, it's a shame to sit, to not so that you're not in the race, of course, enjoying this what would be an amazing battle. on track at the moment. We've got a four car battle over sixth place with Humberstone, Chill Nyland, Delanger, and Stifler, 1980. All battling. We've got Toro Rosso, Renault, Force India, and McLaren all battling out. Starting to close up to the rear end of SJD 1988 in the Haas ahead. So at the moment, we might have a what almost a five car battle for fifth place. So these guys here going as balls to the wall, deciding, you know what, I want track position before that uh, oh. wet period hits. As you see, the Humberstone going wide there. That's going to allow Chill Nyland to go up the Chill. inside, going into turn one. It'd be a late move. He doesn't quite do it, and but not quite brave enough there. But Delange, Delange might have a chance here. Oh no, he's lost it at the back of the corner. I don't know if he had to... It looked like he lost his back end there, but Chill Island will have a chance to, to close in on Hubberstone now. Absolutely insane stuff here. Oh my God, I am absolutely gutted that I'm not racing tonight. Uh, it would have been a belter from everyone. I tell you what, I'm speechless at the minute because we might have the guys here, the band out for the four cars are coming up to SJD now. So we might have between <laughs> from fifth to ninth. Who do you pick? <laughs> Who do you pick, guys? Chill Nyland all over the rear gearbox of Humbostone at the moment. He's, I'm on board sitting above his driving uh, cockpit at the moment and he's swarming around the gearbox of the Toro Rosso ahead and oh Humberstone's slow out of a hairpin and chill really close to collecting the rear end of course you don't want any damage to your front aero here it's critical that you have that front wing of course with these slow corners your entry and exit will be really compromised but Chill Nyland still all over the rear end of the Toro Rosso but what is done is he's gone wide and it's going to allow Chill to possibly cut oh, back as they come, come in on. towards turn 17 18 he oh. doesn't quite think about it he's slow Humbo Stone really oh. starting to struggle on these ultra soft tyres here he really is struggling and I agree with that Gareth he's going to have to go in he, oh no he's going still out We've got a three-second time penalty for Tony Wari uh, for multiple warnings. But what luck would you say that the guys from the Ultrasofts to go in? Because by the looks of the Hubbard car, he should be going in, shouldn't he? Yeah, it looks like... It, 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 interesting to see if it's just tyre wear or if it's actually the Humberstone defending. Or oh, as the two get Ooh. so close as we... Humberstone scraping the wall on the uh, the exit of turn five there and Chill Nyland's going to go along the outside possibly going into turn six and seven oh. he's going to have the outside line does he keep it within oh, the white man. lines it oh he's going to possibly have the inside going into turn uh, eight they're still side oh. by side I tell you what that was a proper to the event but Delange may have a chance there oh, I thought he had a chance of trying it past Chill Nyland I tell you what Oh my god, heart attack on the edge of our seats, you don't know what to, what to say, we're all speechless, thank you guys, thank you very much, <laughs> you've all done a cracking job on this one, so, but yeah, fantastic racing, and it's only about 7 or 31. Absolutely, we've still got a long way to go here in this uh, round 10, the Invictus Racing League No Assist Championship. Of course, next week uh, we have the, um, I believe it's the Brazilian Grand Prix and then the American uh, is our last race of the season. So we've still got plenty more racing for you in this No Assist Championship. And of course, tomorrow night we have the Performance 1 and 2 League. So remember to catch the streams tomorrow night. Both of them will be on at 8 p.m. And then on Wednesday, we've got F1, F2 and F3 and some of the fastest uh, and most fun competitive racing you'll see anywhere on PS4. Is we've got a Sauber going into the pit lane first. So Scott is the first one to come in for a pit stop on lap eight. And we'll see what he moves on to. 
Uh, he's currently coming off those ultra soft tyres. Does he go onto a set of hypers looking towards the rain coming, or is it another set of ultra softs? It's a oh, it flashed up Ooh. hypers, but it looks like it's gone back to ultras there. So possibly a second set of ultra soft tyres for uh, Boy Better Know as he exits the pit lane at the moment in 11th place. Chill Nyland. Oh, he's lost a lot of front aero there. That's a lot of front wing damage for the Renault driver. And he's going to be really compromised on the exit here with Delanga coming up behind him. Oh, definitely. Uh, there was a little bit of contact between uh, Hobbstone and Chiel, uh in Ireland anyway. But oh, he's going to be really struggling to hold on there. But hopefully he'll try and turn in as quickly as possible. But Delange does not want to... Um, stay behind as much as possible because Stifler's right at the back of Delange as well. Oh my god, they nearly lost it there, but Delange, I think yeah, oh, a little bit of contact there between Chiel and Stifler, but Del Delange and Stifler have just gone past Chiel now, Gareth. Yeah, so Chill Nyland, unfortunately there, just getting a little bit over eager on the exit of turn five there, hit the wall on oh. the entry to turn six and he's going to start losing a lot of time here and Stifler 1980 currently still out there on those hyper soft tyres so Stifler currently must be starting to struggle with tyre wear but he's managing to hold on to the back of the Langer 93 in the Force India at the moment having done seven laps and of course unless Scott hit the wall um, that's a very early stop I'd say for this ultra soft runners definitely um, Stifler's done really well to be fair on the hyper softs holding on with those because normally those would have been gone by now I would have thought, to be fair, but he's probably got some better tyre management than than my <laughs> rough estimate guess of the tyre strategies. But um, now, nah, fair play to him. If he's he's going to go the same as the Ultrasofts, but that's really risky, don't you think? The guys currently spread out a little bit now we see gaps forming around 1.5 seconds between the closest on track at the moment. So. Guys neutralising. Oh, as we see the Force India there. Delango kicking the rear end out as he exited uh, turn, I believe that was turn eight there. Uh, just, just checking to see who else has pitched up. Only Scott, aka Boy Better Know, Chill Nyland and Mike. They're the only ones. And Tony Wine now. They've all pitted. Top nine plus Tom in the Rod have not pitted yet. Yeah, these guys still out there on those ultra soft tyres, apart from Stiffer out there on those um, hyper softs, uh, sorry, ultra softs and the hyper softs. So uh, currently eight laps old at the moment. It'd be interesting to see when these tyres will start to go off. Nicky9095 currently leading the race. We haven't been on board of him much this race so far because he's been so far ahead and not had to worry about anything, but currently leading by almost five seconds to speed queen 80 Humberstone picks up a three second time penalty um, and speed queen with quite a nice gap behind her to Joel V520 who's currently eight and a half seconds behind us we see Stifler 1980 does come on come into the pits this lap and so he comes off of those hyper soft tyres on lap 10 uh, ooh. yeah he's pitting in on lap 10 so 10 laps on the hyper softs Fair play to him, holding on there. So he probably would have gone for the ultras, I believe. Now, yeah, he's going for the ultras. Uh, Boy better knows got a fastest lap of 140.9. I think. But Delange is closing on uh, Hubberstone. Hubberstone, uh, Delange has just gone past Hubberstone now for fifth place now. So, oh my God, this is absolutely belter. Absolute belter here, Gareth. And I'll tell you what, again, I'm absolutely privileged to be joining the tonight. Oh, it's great having you in the box, of course. One of the uh, one of the biggest commentators we have here at Invictus doing the Performance 1 and the F3 leagues always makes it great fun to watch the streams. And Delanga 93, that superb move around the outside of Humbostone into Turn 7 there in the Memorial Corner. Uh, one corner I actually kind of liked for an overtaken position. I, I made a few last year in the uh, F2 league there when we were in Singapore and it's definitely a place where you can get a move done around the outside and you can then turn that outside to the inside at turn uh, turn 8 and then turn 9 there so definitely a good overtaking opportunity for the rest of the guys if you are watching the stream and you're going to be racing this week keep an eye on what these guys are doing because they are putting on a good show for you this evening I, I, 
I second that, Gareth. I absolutely second that on that one. And I, I tell you what, oh my God, Delange, we've got the two, uh, so we've got Delange and SJD battling out for fourth place. Chance now for Delange. DRS, SJD's going for the middle there, but Delange might go for the inside. Oh, what a move! Has he got it? Oh, what a move! Oh, yeah. what a move! Brilliant! Sorry, I didn't mean to defeat there. <laughs> no, it's fine, Delanga there, throwing it in the in going up the inside of turn one, turn two there. Looked like SJD did not have anything to say back at him, and he's trying to follow him with DRS aided as they head up the long oh, straight round the, 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 the uh, round the kink of turn six into turn seven. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't quite get the move done, so Delanga is a man on a move at the moment. He's made up two positions in the last three laps, up into fourth position. Of course, the Bre Belgium Grand Prix win. No, Delanga 93, he's definitely enjoying this Force India and he's really starting to pull away from SJD at the moment. So he's possibly enjoying these tyres, maybe looked after them a little bit more in the earlier part of the race. As you see, yeah, SJD sliding out of corners now. So the problem is with these tyres, you can see graining starting to affect the front right and front left hand tyres, especially the front left, is these tyres will start to overheat and when they overheat, you will start sliding and once you've started doing that, as we've got a yellow in sector three. Uh, can't see who it might be. Uh, might uh, be f might be for Mike, who's slow into the pit lane. Looked like he couldn't get it into gear. Uh, yeah, so yeah, Mike into the pit lane in 14th position at the moment. Possibly there, Gareth. Uh, I'm just checking to see if there's any other battles going on, but there's a little bit of a gap between each other but there's two little bit of two battles here we've got Hubberstone Stifler oh SJD and Delange yeah Delange oh, into the pit it. lane so it's Delange back oh uh, he's the f second person as Mike retires from the Grand Prix in 14th position so another unfortunate ending to a race for Mike who's really struggled this season so we do hope that his form improves come the uh towards the end of the season into next is uh, Delanga moving on to the soft tyres, so possibly thinking this rain's not coming for a lot longer, so he's moved on to the harder compound. It will allow him to push a little bit harder into this uh, early into this next stint. Oh, definitely. But with the soft tyres, Gareth, don't you agree that it will be a best advantage in the wet because they're the harder tyres; they'll take longer to gel in. Whereas if you was on the Ultras or the Hypersofts right now, when the rain comes, you'll be really struggling. Yeah, abs absolutely. Those soft compounds are sort of essentially the harder compound you use, the better they'll work at a, a lower temperature because they tend to maintain their, their carcass temperature a little bit uh, longer. Those Ultras and, and Hypers go off very, very quickly. And once that surface uh, temperature's gone and once that, that fresh rubber's been stripped off by the tyre deck, they fall apart and they'll start sliding and if you add a slightly worn hyper soft or ultra soft tire to a wet track surface i think that's going to spell pretty much the end of your race or at least a trip to the pit lane for a new front wing um so possibly the soft compound tire a, a, a safe bet for delanga 93 oh definitely definitely uh just see how it goes to be fair but Schofield is on the 11 laps of soft tyre so he might be thinking of going to knock a little bit more about probably about another probably eight eight nine laps would you say would you reckon 18 laps softs uh, that too much to ask on that one with the softs it's it's a tr it's a tricky ask around here it's it's all on how these guys have looked at those tyres I think that Schofield, knowing him, he will try and stretch this out as long as possible. We know that he, he's pretty good at looking after those tyres. Uh, so Scope definitely will try and drag this thing out as long as possible. He doesn't want to have to come in and make an unnecessary stop if the rain's going to come. Um, but we, I mean, we don't know if they did, they said the rain is going to come at some point. We don't know if it's going to be wet enough to move on to wet tyres. We don't even know if it's going to come on lap 30 of 31. That's the problem. So uh, at the moment, the guys are staying out there on those ultra soft tyres. Of course, the top five currently still 12 laps on the ultra soft. So they're definitely, you can see people trying to drag out these stints as long as possible. They don't want to come in and make an unnecessary pit stop if they don't have to. No, I don't... <laughs> Again, as you said, it could be 
as you said, it could, it could start the rain near the end. Is it me? It's raining. It's yep. slowly starting to rain. On yeah, there are two. there are spots of rain in sector two. Uh, you can see it coming down now, especially in in the flickers of the lights. So yes, rain coming down in sector two. So oh. this this will be interesting. How long does it take before that crossover point comes? Because we know that you can run around on the dry tyres for a while. It needs to really slick up before the intermediates will start working. So. Has this come just a little bit too early for what uh, Delanga 93 was hoping, having come onto those soft tyres? Or does it last, or does it rain essentially long enough for these guys that are out there in the top five on the ultra soft tyres to stay out and hopefully come in when it first goes to intermediate conditions? It, it's absolutely tough. I think normally it'd probably take about six six to eight laps depending on how the rain kicks in as well so that it, it kind of factors in as well Gareth to be fair for me personally I think the way it looks at the minute probably about eight laps I think oh my god we've got two to Toro Rosso's battling out for job believe oh my god side by side oh Hopperstone holding on for the seventh Scopes dropping down to eight Oh, what a move there from Humberstone. What a yeah. move. Humberstone utilising those fresh ultra soft tyres, passing Scopefield and the other in the Sister Toro Rosso, uh, who of course has started on those 13 lap old soft tyres. And we've got Rick WR88 tucked right in behind SJD 1988 with Scott closing up behind the two of them as well. So we've got a yeah, battle for fourth position at the moment between three cars. Yeah, I'm just watching it from Scott's point of view here. He's going for the ins. Oh, we've got a three second time penalty for Scott uh, for corner cutting there. But oh, I thought he had the chance there to try and get past Rick. He needs to get past as quick as possible. Top of the rod, he's got a three second time penalty for one warning. Oh my god. He touched Rick uh, again. Um, this is going to be insane stuff. SJD. SJD's pitting. Yeah, Rick's shady. staying out. Now, SJD comes in this lap. Does he go onto, uh, onto the intermediate tyres and hope that the rain really comes down? Because it would be very brave now to come in and possibly, I, I don't know, maybe put on a set of hyper soft tyres. Is that his, his thought process? Is it the hypers and just hope that it's just a quick stint on them? Um, oh, 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 it's, it's, it's another set of oh. ultras as we see Scott kicking the rear end out. But he's going to go side by side along the Williams as they come around the turn. The kink at turn six. He's got the move done on the Williams. Scott moving back up into fourth position. And he, that was quite nicely done there for the Sauber driver. Oh, just about gets it slowed down in time for turn eight. Doesn't hit the wall around turn nine. It's that long, or oh, feels like a long stretch down towards the Singapore sling. Oh, I find this probably one of the hardest corners on the track to get it slowed down for. We've got a yellow in sector three. Um still out at the moment so we'll let's see if anyone drops position and it's Tommy the Rod that's retired from the race so has Tommy had an accident in sector 3 somewhere is this rain starting to affect these guys on the uh, old ultra soft tyres oh, it could be it could be Gareth but anything could have happened here but we could have made a mistake throughout sector 3 we'll have to find out if we can catch the car uh, as quickly as possible but Depends where it is as well, but uh, just still watching. I, I tell you what, I don't know when the guys are going to actually going to pick the inters because it's still not, it's still not ready. To be fair, for the um, intermediate stuff, it's just too early. And yeah, the, the rain not sorry. coming down. No, sorry, the rain not coming down heavy at all. At the moment, it's definitely just drizzling out there. It's not giving the guys any grief really I mean the track surface will be getting colder but it's not really getting that much slicker at the moment so the dry compound tyres still the right ones to be on at the moment of course until that uh, DRS does get uh, disabled by Charlie Whiting and the race stewards that will be the time to come in and make that pit stop or at least around that sort of time but until we see that shine of the race surface like gleaning under the white, uh, the bright lights in the, uh, the the track surface. I don't think these guys should look at coming in for the intermediate tyres. 
No, I think it will be. It's it's hard to tell, to be fair, when it's going to kick in. Like as in, but the as you can see, I'm just watching it from Chill's point of view. Uh, I th it it'll be coming at some point. I think the next few laps would kick in. I think, to be fair. Um, it just depends, Gareth. It just depends. <laughs> And Nicky comes into the pit, so your race leader coming into the pit lane now. He's done 16, almost 17 laps on those ultra soft tyres. So currently a 9.6 second leaders over Speed Queen, who also comes into the pit lane as well. So is this the time that the leaders come in uh, and make that no. stop? Uh, so Joel, it will be the last one at uh, the moment. We'll see if does Joel come in equally as well, having gone out on the same amount of tyres as the other guys. So it's intermediates for Speed Queen. So intermediate tyres for Speed Queen. She's the first one to gamble to move onto that grooved tyre. Uh, whilst it looks like Nikki's gone back out on another set of ultras. Oh my god. What would you do there? Would you have gone for the inters at this point, Gareth? Or would oh, you have... It's, it, looks, it still looks maybe a, a, a lap or two too well. Maybe even more than a lap or two early. She struggled to get the power on round turn three there and she's just had Scott breeze past her as they headed up towards turn five there so Speed Queen out on the intermediate tyres will look to see if she can get it slowed down of course if you're on dry tyres you'll have much better grip compared to these intermediates she's not losing too much time at the moment so yeah Sab says interesting strategy there from Speed Queen to go on to the interme uh, intermediates early and so we'll look to see does this play dividends for her Maybe she expects this rain to come down pretty heavily in the next lap or two and she might be able to utilise that slight lap jump as we see Scott and uh, Scott and Joel battling over second position at the moment. So uh, Joel really starting to struggle on these old tyres. Oh, he doesn't get it slowed down. It looked like it was a little bit of a push there from the Sauber driver into the hairpin there. So a little bit cheeky from Scott getting it slowed down for the hairpin. And that's allowed Scott to move back up into second position. Joel drops down to third, really starting to struggle on those uh, ultra soft tyres. And I think we well, picks up a three second time penalty as well. They're really unfortunate for Joel. He's going to get passed by Speed Queen on those intermediate tyres. So the intermediates are now faster than an old set of ultra soft tyres. So I think we might uh, expect to see Joel coming into the pit lane uh, in about three or four corners time. Oh, I would agree with you on that one, Gareth. I absolutely agree with you on that one. But uh, I just want to say good evening to Saab and F1 Richard as well. Oh, uh, Scott's going into the pits now. Scott's going to the pits now, so he will be going for the Inters. I'm, I'm assuming he'll go for the Inters anyway. But Speed Queen is going to try and catch up to the Nicky, who's 15 seconds between. Nicky's got off the pit anyway, regardless. He's got off the pit anyway because of the uh, uh, the wet tyre stuff as well. Interesting yeah, the, stuff. the guy's starting to stream into the pit lane now. We've got Scopefield of the Chilton Island and Delanger 93 all coming in nose to tail into the pit lane. Yeah, you can see Scott, Joel, Stifler, Scope, Chill, Delanger all in the pit lane. Nicky still out there on those ultra soft tyres that he started on. The Toro Rosso's are stacking in the pit lane at the moment. Oh, you can see the Toro Rosso stuck in the pit lane. What well, looks like he's not allowing the Renault out of its pit box. So Chilton Island being held up by Scopefielder there that can't move into his pit box. And now he's... Oh, slight glitch out there. Um, but it looks like he may have lost quite a considerable amount of time there. He's come out behind Chilton Island and behind Delanger 93. So both Chill and uh, Scopefield are really compromised by that. That uh, unfortunate uh, game glitch there that's promoted the Langer up into eighth position everyone out there is on intermediates apart from race leader Nikki 9095 still running around on those ultra soft tires that have done 18 laps they must be screaming wanting to come off that car uh, definitely but I was watching that the time difference get out to be fair it was getting bigger but the last few corners as you said it's getting shorter and shorter now yeah Nikki's going to the pits Gareth, he's going to the pits. I think, I feel it might just be a little bit too late. It takes around 29 seconds for a pit stop around here. It's a slow entry. It's only 37 miles an hour down that pit lane. Uh, it's, 
It's a uh, it's 420 meters long, but it will take quite a while because it's such a slow point. And you see Speedqueen go past, and I think possibly he might only lose the one position, so it might be Speedqueen that's benefited because Scott's still coming around the final complex of corners now into turn 20, 21. So yeah, Nicky will unfortunately lose that huge amount of time. He was leading the race by over 10 seconds, but as you see now, he's come out of the pit lane 12 seconds behind Speed Queen. Yeah, I think it will compromise him, to be fair, but he tried to hold on with those tyres as much as possible, but the Ray was just kicking in too much, wasn't it, to be fair. Yeah, I think Mick, Nicky possibly just being a little bit over over uh, ambitious on those dry tyres. And yeah, as, as, as Sab says, we thought it was an interesting strategy from Speed Queen to come in onto those intermediate tyres first. But it's worked absolutely perfectly for her. And it shows why she's been so successful in, in, in Invictus in the past as she now leads the race by 12 and a half seconds with no one in sight to challenge her. You just don't know what to say, do you, on that one, but Scope. Uh, the only close battle we've got, Gareth, is 9th and 10th with Scope and Chill and Ireland. Um, probably battling out for 9th. And as you can see from the two cars, the see Delange just a little bit ahead, but it's just these two are having a ding-dong battle for, uh, for ninth place. But saying that, though, Gareth, um, looking at the tables as well, uh, if you bear with me a sec, so at the minute, before tonight's race, Speed Queen was on 67 points, Joel was on 41, and Boy Better Now was on 40 points. If Speed Queen wins, she wins the Tier 1 title, as far as I could see, because she had to get two points from the last three races. <laughs> and, and now, she, if, it's, if it stands like this, Speed Queen will win the title. Oh, sorry, just hey, just to interrupt you there, t uh, Tony Y has gone into the wall uh, at, at turn 18 as they get to the uh, underneath the the uh, stadium there, and unfortunately he's trying to get the car turned round. He's really struggling. He's lost all of that front wing, and unfortunately Tony Y, it's going to be a. Luckily for him, it's not too far to get back to the pit lane from where he is, but he's hit the wall, recovering. He spun the car around, but he's just clipped the Armco barrier, and he's taken the front left tire off. Oh. He's left the car stricken underneath the uh, underneath the uh, the stand there. So virtual safety car has been deployed across the circuit, and it's a drive-through penalty for speeding under the virtual safety car for SJD. So really oh, unfortunate no. there for SJD. The virtual safety car out and he just didn't get it slowed down in time. And unfortunately oh. for there for Tony, it just seemed like he couldn't get the car pointing in the right direction. And when he could, unfortunately, he just just clipped that. You can see a slight edge on that Armco barrier and Tony taking the front left tyre off of that Renault. And I'm sure a Cyril or Beatball will not be overly impressed with his driver's attempt at trying to get that par back to the pit lane. Oh. But we've still got the virtual safety car still with us at the minute. But um, as I was saying, uh, just Speed Queen will win uh, the Tier 1 title tonight if it, stand, if it stays like this. However, with Tier 2 situation, we've got Hubberstone 59, Scope Fielder on 56, Delange on 52. Hubberstone is in 5th, Scope Fielder is in 10th, Delange is in 8th. As it stands, I think uh, 12, 10, 8, and 6. So 65 points for Hulverstone. If it stays like this, uh, Scope would have 57. And Delange would have 55 points. So, 8 point gap between Hulverstone and Scope Fielder for Tier 2. With two races left. If it, uh, if it stays like this. I'm not saying it will, but Schofield is trying to get barring out with uh, Chill, um, Gareth. But what do you think of that? Do you think, do you think Hoverstone will just hold on in the tyre race, or do you think there will be a bit of a, a few shocks in the last few races? I don't think we can rule out anything from Schofield, Schofield or Delanger come the last few races. We, we've seen those three take points off each other all season long, and at the moment, Schofield are still still caught behind Chilton Island at the moment but at the, you can see the rain starting to come down heavier and heavier upon lap on lap so 
it'd be interesting to see. We've got 10 laps left to go. Do we get to full wet conditions or do we stay at intermediates? It'd be interesting to see if these guys think if the rain comes down any more that they think they need to move on to those blue walled high groove tyres, those extreme wets. Scopefield are still all over the rear end of Chilton Island as they go into turn one and turn two here. Can't quite get the move done at the moment. It feels like it's a little bit more motocross than it is Formula One. They're sliding around these corners trying to get the power down in time. So it's all about keeping it on the black stuff and out of the wall at the moment as Scopefield is going to be right in the gearbox of the Renault as they come onto the, the straight at turn five and turn six. Of course, no DRS at the moment, but he's going to look towards the inside. Does he make the move down the inside? He doesn't. He thinks against it. So Scopefield is still stuck behind that Renault. Oh my god, this is absolutely insane stuff here, Gareth. Absolutely insane. Do you think Scope would beat uh, Chill, right? Or do you think it'll be. There's 10 laps left. Oh, I think it's a good thing we don't have any microphones inside helmets at the moment because I think you'd hear a very angry scope fielder frustrated that he can't get past that uh, that yellow and black Moreno in front of him. He knows that he's got to catch up to Humbo Stone and Delanger ahead, but Chill doing pretty nicely to keep the Toro Rosso behind putting this car in all the right places and we're in the conditions now where you just you don't want to make a false move you don't want to put yourself offline where you might compromise your own uh, movements around the track and I think you'll find that Scope will only make that move when he thinks it's safe to do so there's no point with uh, with nine laps left to go doing anything overly brave and essentially overtly stupid no, definitely not. Here's an interesting fact. I know you said the rain's coming in heavier now. Do you think you would risk it and go for the wets, full-on wets, or do you think keep on into this for now? I know we haven't seen the weather stuff, so we can't really say, but the way it looks at the minute, it looks like it's going to be full-on heavy wets. In my personal opinion. I, I would say if I was further down the grid and I thought that there was potentially the chance of it going to full wets that yeah I'd probably I'd probably go for the extreme wets maybe in a few laps time um, just to just to essentially these guys fighting over over the lower positions they're not too uh, too close to anyone else apart from Chill, Scope and Delanger who are fighting over 7th, 8th and 9th at the moment but the rest of them, it's just give it a gamble and, and see what happens. But what is interesting to see at the moment, I'm not sure if you've kept tabs on it, Malk, is the the lead at the moment. It was 12 and a half seconds when they came out with the stops, but in four laps, seven. Nicky has now got it down to seven seconds. So he's reeling Speed Queen in lap upon lap. You see that time coming down, that interval dropping down pretty dramatically sector upon sector as Chill Nylon runs wide here into the Singapore sling and that's almost allowing uh, is, uh, almost allowing Schofield the through and just as you were talking about Malk, SJD moves on to the extreme wet tyres Oh, uh, would it go for it though, like I said would it, would it benefit though at the minute it looks like he's taking off a tenth of Rick at the minute will it, oh, I, I think I, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I don't even know. I think I would have gone for the wet, to be honest, because if I was if I was just trying to get the last point, the guys, it's getting more heavier, to be honest. So Yeah, Scopefield are really struggling to get the car slowed down now, and you can see the track getting a lot wetter at the moment. So and p potentially, would Speed Queen look at coming in for a set of the extreme wets earlier and trying to get... The jump as we see, yeah, so Delanga and Chill Nyland into the pit lane this lap. So it looks like it's going to move on to the blue walled extreme wet tyres for them. It allows Scopefield a, a free track possibly to try and set one quick lap, hoping that he's still got some life left in those intermediate tyres. But now we see, yeah, the guy's moving on to the extreme wet tyres. So Speed Queen, she's losing that, that lead. It's now down to six and a half seconds. Possibly move on to those extreme <laughs> wet tyres. Or I think we might find ourselves coming in for a, a final few lap battle between the Sauber and the McLaren. Oh, my God. I'll tell you what, let's have a, let's have a, uh, a debate. Do you think, do you think Nicky will do it? Do you think he'll get speed clean or do you think it's a bit too much 
with eight laps left. Oh, Nicky seems to have the raw pace over everyone this evening, so he seems to be really enjoying this track here in Marina Bay, Singapore. He's really rinsing that lead out of Speakwin, who does pit, so the leader into the pit lane for the, uh, for the uh, extreme wet tyres. And Nicky staying out, so Nicky still staying out on those intermediate tyres. Whereas Speed Queen slowly making her way to the pit box and Scott having to stay out as well because he knows that he can't lose any more time stacking behind his teammate. But he does go past, so Speed Queen currently leaving the pit box now, coming out the pit lane. Does she get past by Scott? She does. They're going to come out almost side by side. Speed Queen leaving the pit lane now, so Scott making the move past uh, the sister Sauber as he enters turn three. Oh, I'm just watching the battle between Rick and SJD for 10th and 11th respectively here uh, Gareth but this is just absolutely insane stuff because Rick's just come out of the pit and SJD with like 29 seconds gap between himself and Rick SJD had the chance to try and get past Rick but Rick's holding on for 10th and he's just pulling away slowly with the Williams car now so interesting stuff but Stifler's going in for the wet tyres as well Scopefield is going for the wet tyres as well, so SJD has got a three second time pass for multiple warnings. Yeah, it will be interesting to see here. Did that extra lap on the uh, on the intermediate tyres cost Scope uh, more time? Will he lose? We know that he was close up behind Delanger, Chill Nyland. These two are coming around the final two corners now. Scope is uh, exiting the pit lane, so it's going to be a sprint to the first corner for these two. Looks like Scopefielder might have just done it. He's coming around the pit lane. Oh, he's crossed the white line. That's a three-second time penalty for Scope, but he is going to make out ahead of Delanger 93 and Chilne Island. So it's it's a little bit of a, of a positive and a negative there. He got out ahead of the traffic, but he does pick up that three-second time penalty for crossing the white line on the exit of the pit lane. Yeah, that might compromise at the end of the race because we've got quite a few battles between Delange, uh, Delange and Chilton Island behind as well. So in, his chance of finishing so might be compromised by dropping down to, to ninth, Gareth. Yeah, absolutely. Just checking on the lead battle at the moment. Speed Queen starting to reel in. Scott, uh, Scott ahead is coming down around uh, one-tenth every few seconds. So she's starting to bring the second Sauber into play at the moment and Nicky currently sitting 16, 16 and a half seconds up the road from him equally so around 19, 20 seconds for Speed Queen to catch up to Nicky does Nicky try and stretch these intermediate tyres to the end of the race or does he decide that it's uh, he's got to come in for the extreme weights and it's not worth the risk as you see a force injury there of the Langer 93 kicking the rear end of that uh, of that uh, Pink Panther out as he exits uh, turn 14 there. Oh, it's just insane. So best has gone past Rick on the up to the end of the, the second sector. Oh my God, what a move from SJD! What a move! Brilliant stuff. Um, but Rick did everything possible to hold on for 10th, but now he's dropped down to the 11th now. Um, Still watching from that battle between them two, but there's no other battles going on other than Chill Delange. Could be soon. Yeah, Chill Nyland currently still sitting just 1.3 seconds behind Delange. Lost a little bit of time going around the third sector there. These guys starting to get used to these slightly wetter conditions, of course. Luckily for them, they were ma they managed to uh, to get a little bit of practice in the qualifying session, which of course was a wet session as well. So these guys do know how to drive around the Singapore uh, Marina Bay circuit in these wet conditions. So not quite the uh, the unknown, but of course they they will have to watch their braking points with cars directly in front of them as. We see the, uh, the position changes here, and it's Humberstone moving up three positions into fifth place at the moment. It's Stifler, 1980, on his return to the No Assist Championship, currently in sixth position, having moved up seven positions. So Stifler, 1980, definitely the mover of the day so far. Schofield has dropped down one. It's SJD who's really suffered today. He's dropped down from fifth place into tenth. Uh, lost, uh, Rod, Tony, and Mike uh, from the so currently only 11 runners on track at the moment oh it'd be interesting stuff to see what happens here but there's going to be a few more shocks left to do i think with five laps left at the 
pouring down monsoon, shall we say, <laughs> at uh, Marina Bay. But I tell you what, this is going to be very interesting stuff as well because looking at the top three as well, that I don't know if the, the top two would go in. I reckon they'll probably just stay out of the inters for now, but Speed Queen's close in. Yeah, Speed Queen's definitely catching up to Scott at the moment with five laps left to go. Scott definitely will be losing time lap upon lap upon lap out on those tyres that probably aren't suited for the conditions at the moment. Um, the intermediates, of course, they are a very versatile tyre. They will work in a, in very changeable conditions, but we don't see any standing water on the track at the moment. You can see the rain teeming down, and there you see you, you do see a couple of puddle, puddles appearing uh, on oh. the exit of turn 12 there. Oh, uh, Scarp and Stifler, 4, 6, 7... Oh, a little bit of contact there from the first few corners there, but absolutely insane stuff. But Stifler's holding on for sixth place here, Gareth. But Scopes want to try and get past Stifler as quickly as possible. Try and get that three, three second gap at least. Absolutely yeah. insane stuff. Stifler's still out there on those intermediate tyres, so equally he'll be losing time as well. And Humbo Stone on the wet compound, Scopefielder on the wet compound, so the guys around him be on the much nicer tyre to be on so Stifler is going to have to drive his heart out if he's going to keep this Toro Rosso behind him and Scopefielder definitely smelling blood in the water with the McLaren ahead and knows that Stifler possibly off his little off his game having having been out of the game for a while a little bit rusty and equally being on a much nicer tyre for the conditions and the Toro Rosso should just by this time possibly allow yeah, as you see Stifler struggling to get the car slowed down there as they enter the Singapore sling so it's into this uh, into this hairpin here where you should see the Toro Rosso getting much better traction on the exit nice entry oh. for the McLaren oh it's a poor exit for the Toro Rosso so he loses time on the exit there tag the wall ever so slightly and you see behind they're starting to get caught by Delanga 93 and Chilln Island yeah definitely that uh, Gareth but needs to, go, needs to try and get past Stipler as quickly as possible because he did have that nearly had that three second gap between himself and Lange, so he would have held on for seventh. But if it stays like this, I, you could see a few shocks along the way tonight. Absolutely, and there's been battles going on across the race all race long, all different conditions of force. Ooh. Oh, you see. Force into though the McLaren just kicking the rear end out and Stifler somehow holding on to it. The car was almost at a 45 degree angle as he exited turn 21 there into, into turn 22. Somehow he managed to keep control of it and he's still keeping Scopefielder behind him. Scopefielder must feel like he's just sitting behind a car all race long. Of course, he couldn't get past Chilton Island earlier in the stint and now he's stuck behind Stifler 1980 and. Uh, it looks like it's Chats. quite. A, yeah, it's, this is probably his best opportunity. He's tucked right in behind the the gearbox of Stifler 1980s. They head up the straight round turn six into turn seven. A memorial corner. He's going to go for the outside line. Does he get the move down on the outside? He's going to have the inside for the next corner. The two tag, but Stifler once again just running him out of road. Just not not overly aggressively, but enough to say, you know what? You're not coming past. Not yet. Not yet, sunshines. Not yet here. I tell you what, we've got two battles going on. Gareth, we've got, as you said, Stifler and Scope, and we've got Delange and Chill. Not sure if you've mentioned uh, Sin there. Uh, Mount is uh, Speed Queen back in the pit lane for a set of intermediate tyres. So Speed Queen, having come in for those extreme wets, has now decided we're back. You can see the rain has, has almost stopped in the pit lane. It's very, very, uh, it's, it's much shallower now. And yeah, Joel V520 also deciding to come into the pit lane off of the extreme wet tyres. So these guys that are on those extreme wets possibly now deciding that they, uh, they're going to be losing too much time to the guys on the inters. So... Possibly Stifler 1980. This might be where he can make up time. He's lost that position to Scopefielder, but does Scope decide to stay out on these uh, extreme wets, or uh, do they try and battle around and hope that Stifler doesn't get faster on these intermediates? I, I, I really don't know. But as you said, the, the wets are. I think the four wets are had it now. To be honest, because the wets and the rain stopping slowly now so, the, so it will be intermediate 
conditions already, but I don't, I don't know, it's tough stuff now, but fair play to Nicky and Boyd better now as well, fair play to them. Um, oh, this is going to be an interesting stuff, we've got about three laps left, two to three laps left of the Pictures Racing League, no it's just the Pictures Racing first. Just on board here with our leader, Nikki9095 has led almost flag to flag and he's currently with or just started lap 29 coming around turn 5 now onto the main straight. He's led the race by an absolute mile almost the entire way so he definitely knows his way around this Marine, Marina Bay circuit and the McLaren locking up ever so slightly but he decided to stay out on those intermediate tyres and it's just about nursing these guys to the end, making sure that he doesn't lock up too hard into any of these corners. You don't want to hit the wall or pick up any unnecessary wing damage. You can see him bouncing off the limiter there. Uh, is down through the grid. We see the closest battle on grid at the moment. We've got Chun Nyland still one second behind Delanger, 93 in 8th uh, and ninth position. Nicky currently maintaining a 19.9 second lead over Scott who's then got a 30 second lead back to Speed Queen who unfortunately had to make that extra pit stop so uh, possibly the extreme wets were good for that time period but it looks like Scott and Nicky made the best strategy call with staying on these intermediate tyres yeah they've done a magnificent job regardless to be honest uh, and hopefully they'll do everything possible to uh, well, Nicky will try and do everything possible to hold on but uh, there could be something drastically happens but it's a commentator's curse now that we said it <laughs> already but um, I think I think Nicky will hold on for first I think Water Bear now will get second and Speed Queen will hold on for third and win her tier one uh, tier one title to the middle and it will be uh, Stifler that moves up past Scopefielder there. So Stifler utilising those intermediate tyres on a much uh, more comfortable circuit for those tyres. Breezing past Scopefielder on the exit of turn three there. Oh, definitely. I thought I thought Scope would have held on, to be honest. But as you said, the Inters are the more favourable now, to be honest. But... Yes, yeah, uh, Scope's really struggling on a few of the corners there now, trying to hold on with those four wets, but it depends on how everyone else does it, but fair play to the guys tonight, it's been a cracking race from, eight, from start to finish. Yeah, absolutely, these guys really showing, uh, oh, Stifler just about keeping control of that McLaren there as he came out of the Singapore sling. Yeah, these guys really doing well, showing their car control and and temperament really making sure they keep their concentra concentration they don't make any silly moves on anyone around them and yeah. it's 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 been really impressive from these guys in these changeable conditions and of course the guys watching uh ready for uh, tomorrow and wednesday's races will will hope that this won't happen to them and they get a nice clear uh singaporean skyline for their races Yeah, hopefully it'll be better race, uh, better drive conditions on the next two races for these guys. But you never know in Brazil, you never know in America. Uh, you just never know what to expect. But fair play to the guys. We've got about two laps left of the Invictus Racing League Analysis League at the Glorious Races in the pool. What a race so far. Uh, brilliant. Yeah, 30 laps done so far. Nicky coming around his penultimate lap. Uh, Scott currently 21 seconds behind. And then Speed Queen behind him. Uh, having lapped the Haas of SJD by the looks of it. So SJD will be finishing a lap down equally. So will Rick WR88 unfortunately finishing a lap down. Um, although Nicky looks like he's come over and he's crossed the start finish line. He's made his way past Chun Island so lapping Chun Island as well so uh, Nicky possibly just the rubbing salt in the wounds of some of these other guys on surface just how quick he's been this evening so Nicky really really doing himself uh, a, a good service tonight and uh, showing just how fast he can be on his day 
Yeah, definitely. He's been absolutely brilliant, uh, regardless of what happened. He did a, a great qualifying, and then he just just done his race, done what he needed to do. He's just keeping it going. Uh, <coughs> sorry about that. <laughs> <to sneeze>. <laughs> Bless <laughs> was, you. Uh, and uh, Nikki lapping Delanga ninety three there. So D Nikki has now lapped up to eighth position on track at the moment. So with Scopefielder just a little bit further up the road. It looks like Nicky would have to push quite hard to catch him by the end of the lap, but don't put him out. He's been that quick over this race that, of course, don't think Scopefielder will want to finish that one lap down, so I think he'll probably try and do everything he can to to keep him behind him, but Nicky is closing, closing in at a rate of knots at the moment before the end of the race. And uh, Nicky now coming around turn 20 and turn 21. Only two corners left to go after this. And he will take the race victory here in Singapore at Marina Bay. The Singapore Grand Prix round 10 of the Invictus Racing League No Assist Championship goes to Nicky9095. The fireworks go off. Congratulations to him and McLaren for a fantastic win around here. And I'm sure, Melk, you can agree that, that was an absolutely sublime drive from the McLaren driver. Oh, definitely, definitely. I keep saying it. He's just, he's, he, as you said earlier in, the, in the, the stream as well, he's had a bit of an inconsistent season, but this this should be a bounce back now to the, the, uh, the last few races of the, the first season of the British Racing League of 2018. So uh, I think it'll be a bit of a boost for him now, and I'm happy for him. No, it's going to be a nice uh, boost for coming back to 2019 now. So uh, Scott's just finished second. Speed Queen will definitely finish third. So, and, and I want to say congratulations to Speed Queen for winning the Tier 1 title, which I believe that's been confirmed, I think. I think she's got more than uh, a few more points than the others, I think. So congratulations to Speed Queen for Tier 1 champion. So fair play to her for a fantastic season as well. Absolutely, uh, yeah. That. It's been well deserved from Speed Queen, who's who started the season off not as fast as she possibly would have wished, but she's got quicker and quicker, and she's definitely been uh, the one to catch later in the season. And yeah, congratulations to her for her title. Uh, Humbo Stone is possibly run out of fuel come towards the end of the race we'll see he's getting right he's going to have Joel for company oh. on the line it's going to be very close between the oh. two of them and he just just keeps it uh, over the uh, the Force India driver as Humbo Stone comes in fourth the highest placed tier two driver Joel P520 comes in fifth Stifler 1980 on his return comes in a very credible sixth position uh, ahead of Scopefield who was the last one on the lead lap uh, just about maintained uh, being on the lead lap for about a, for a half a second to Nikki 905 and he's going to come around the final two corners now and it's going to be Scopefield that are coming in in seventh position in the Toro Rosso and that will end the Singapore Grand Prix oh brilliant stuff brilliant stuff Insane stuff, absolutely insane. Um, fun, well done to Nikki, well done to um, Scott, and well done to Speed Queen. And again, fantastic racing all round, all season long. So fantastic for them guys. And uh, hopefully, we'll see some more. The last two races will be a bit of a closer battle for the constructors as well. Which would, would you say? Absolutely, I think, yeah, this this definitely isn't it for the Gnosis Championships. We still do have two rounds to go and we can expect to see equally as uh, brilliant races as we've seen tonight. And there you can see your final results. And without a penalty, Nikki 9095 takes the race victory. Uh, started on pole, finished at the lead, flag to flag, wins the race. Uh, two stops, brilliant race, just under an hour. Uh, for the McLaren drive, he comes in first. Scott comes in second with Speed Queen in third. Humbo Stone comes in fourth with Joel V520 in fifth. Stifler 1980 comes in sixth with Scopefielder in seventh. Delango 93 in eighth with Chill Island in ninth. SJD picks up the final point in tenth. Uh, Rick finishes in eleventh. And then your non finishers were Mike, Tony, and Tommy the Rod, who unfortunately all crashed out earlier in the session. Um, 
and it really was a, a pretty spectacular race and yeah as, as Sab says it was a great race so thanks guys for watching the stream uh, of course if you're watching it for the first time and you're new to Invictus check out our website InvictusRacingLeagues.com you can go to the sign up page where you can get involved and get yourself on the uh, on the grid for the next season that we will be uh, starting in around a, mo a month's time so make sure you get your name on the grid for those seasons uh, Check out the Twitter at, uh, at Invictus RL where you'll find all of your stream details and your commentators, uh, commentators details. That's the best place to get any info about upcoming races with Invictus. And of course, if you'd like to check out my Twitter, it's GT2 underscore driving and Malk, I believe your F1 WWFC underscore 07 spot on mate well done spot so uh make sure you check out there and of course the race reviews will be posted uh up on the website invictusracingleagues.com on the homepage. they will be coming out sporadically over the coming weeks uh but yeah make sure you do check out our streams tomorrow night performance one and performance two malk will be in the box for performance one and rick will be in the box for performance two and then equally on wednesday night you've got f1 f2 and f3 so make sure you tune in to as much as you can get as much of that invictus back in after all this time away from us uh and apart from that it's been thank you malk for joining me it's been great having you in the box once again it's always great fun to uh to do some commentary with you Oh, thank you very much for this, uh, Gareth. It's been an absolute pleasure as always, and uh, well, hopefully I will do this again another time, hopefully soon. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Captain, for that one. So well done, well done for the commentary. You've done fantastic as always. And I'm just chilling out, just trying to get the best moves. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. So, but yeah, well done tonight, mate. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Well, thank you very much and thank you everyone for watching. Thank you everyone for sending your comments in. Hopefully uh, everyone here it was uh, enjoying the race and enjoyed the stream. And uh, hopefully we will see you next week where we go to Interlagos in Brazil for round 11 of the no, uh, Invictus Racing League No Assist Championship. And for me uh, and from Malk, I say good night. Ah, good night. I know.